Welcome to Vespers, everyone. Uh, it's good to be here, and I'm glad to spend this time with you um, tonight. And I pray that uh, we'll have a good time together, but most importantly, that we'll uh, draw closer to Christ. We're going to start off with uh, a beautiful song called Father of Creation um, that will hopefully usher us into, the, into His presence. And uh, if you know it, sing along. If you don't, I hope you'll be blessed by this. Um, so we're going to sing the song and then we'll go outside and I'll share something from the Word of God with you uh, for tonight as well. So uh, join if, if you can and if you know it. One, two, three, four. Well, uh, good evening, everyone. It's good to be with you uh, on the Sabbath day and um, welcoming the Sabbath with you guys. And uh, yeah, happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Uh, I wanted to share something small with you. So before we get started, let's, let's, uh, uh, let's open with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, thank you that we can uh, be in your presence again um, this evening. And Father, we just pray that you will speak to us. Uh, speak to our hearts, um, guide us and lead us into a closer connection with you. Father, we pray that during these Sabbath hours that we might um, even just forget about the stuff that's happening around us and just reconnect with you. And Father, we pray this now that as we just spend this little bit of time together, that um, we might uh, just come together in your word, that you will give us understanding and that your spirit will guide us as we as we discuss your word. Thank you, Father, for your love. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, um, so yeah, it's good to be with you guys again today. And um, I wanted to share something that uh, has been, you know, on my mind for quite a while now. Um, in fact, it was, it was a few years ago when uh, my brother, one of my brothers, uh, bought a, a, a car. It was a, it was a Land Rover. Um, what is it? Uh, discoverer or discover? 
um, defender. That's what it was. It was a defender. And so, um, you know, he, 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 you know, spoke to him on the phone one day and he said, yeah, no, I got this thing. It was a secondhand defender, but he really liked this, this concept and he was traveling a lot of off-road um, uh, tracks. And uh, so you had this Defender and you really enjoyed it. And um, when he first told me about it, I thought to myself, a Defender, what does the Defender look like? I couldn't, I couldn't for the life of me kind of recall what did the Defender look like. So you know what it's like, you go and you Google it and you check it out. Ah, oh, yes, that's what he got. Okay, I know that's a nice car, etc., etc. Anyway, but it's interesting. I thought to myself at that point, I can't remember seeing many of these cars on the road. They're not very popular cars. Anyway, you, you, you know the feeling when you when you uh and it happens in particular with cars i think when you when you when you first think about a, a car or you're looking to buy a car or something and you and you're thinking of a particular make or brand uh, you don't really see them that much until you think about it and then when you get onto the road all of a sudden you see them everywhere and so that's that's kind of what happened i, I checked this thing out and then for the weeks you know after that and you know, i just kept on thinking wow yeah i see oh there's a defender there's a defender there's a defender there's a defender and so we started seeing all these defenders and um, it is just quite interesting because I remember a few years ago reading the book, The Great Controversy. It was the first time I had read the book and actually I'm, I'm planning on reading it again in, in, the, in the next uh, few months. I want to get back into it again. Um, but I really enjoyed it. And one of the things that really stood out to me in, in this book, I mean, there were many things, but one of the key things that stood out to me was... Um, the early reformers who defended the truth they defended the truth with everything they had and um, Martin Luther and I remember his talk at the diet um, where where he said I will not recant um, unless I'm convinced by the Word of God uh, and he said that three times and um, it just it just really stood out to me that that they put their lives on the line to defend the truth the uh the i mean the early church uh did as well the apostles the early reformers in 1844 with the great disappointment there were a bunch of people that were essentially the laughing stock of the world and they continued to search the scriptures and defend the truth and i believe in this time where we are today in world's history is we are called also to defend the truth there's no question in my mind that we are to defend the truth as it is in the Word of God and the Word of God alone. And so um, I, I look through the history books and I, and I see almost, I see myself in these books and I see you and I and the church where we are now being great defenders of the truth in the last time. We've got the three angels message, we've got the beauty of the gospel, we've got the prophecies. Um, and we've got the soon return of Jesus and we need to be bold in proclaiming that truth and defending the truth as it is in the Word of God. So, so I see that. But today is not, I didn't want to talk about that. I wanted to talk about a different defense. While we are to defend the truth as Jesus defended the truth, we are to defend the brethren as Jesus defended the brethren. You see, in my mind, there's no point in defending the truth if we're not defending the brethren. I think they go hand in hand. And Jesus certainly um, showed this. Uh, we know that he preached the truth. Um, and in that time, the truth in, in, in the way Jesus preached was, was, was foreign to many people because they had different percep perceptions and perspectives. And Jesus kind of brought that in line. Um, in fact, many times he didn't just bring it in line, he literally flipped it upside down. That's how radical the truth was compared to where they, they had come in their journey. And I think there's many people today that have an upside down view of the truth. Um, but Jesus coupled that with defending people, with defending sinners. Now, he never defended the sin. But he defended the sinners. And one of the classic examples you and I both know is, is that wonderful story where Jesus has sat down um, in the temple uh, area, I think it was, and um, a bunch of priests and Pharisees and scribes and all these guys came together and they wanted to trick Jesus yet again. And um, they planned this event where they would get a woman that was caught in the middle of adultery 
and of course they figured out this perfect plan because by the law of Moses that uh, woman should have been stoned and of course Jesus you know they thought oh how's Jesus going to react to this maybe we can catch him out and so they get this woman in the middle of the act um, uh, and they throw him at Jesus feet and they're all standing around there and they're and they're ready to go they've got stones in their hands and they say Rabbi what do you say and I want to pick this up in the Bible um, I think it's in John chapter 8 if I'm not mistaken um, I've got it here so uh, we don't waste too much time um, and verse 6 uh, John chapter 8 verse 6 this is the new um, uh, the new King James Version and he said and it says yeah this they said testing him that they might have something of which to accuse him so they wanted to accuse Jesus but Jesus stooped down and wrote to the ground with his finger as though he did not hear them. So he just kind of ignored them and started writing on the ground. Verse 7. So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and he said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him throw at her first. Throw a stone at her first. And again, he stooped back down and he started to write. And, and then those who heard it, being convinced by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the oldest, even to the last. And Jesus was left there alone. And the woman standing in the midst. And Jesus raised himself up and saw no one but the woman and said to her, Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Verse 11. And so, um, so yeah, we have a picture of Jesus um, who, is, who, who, who the, the scribes and Pharisees uh, want to create a, a, a space where they can accuse Jesus. And they use um, a, a situation to accuse the woman and to condemn the woman. And the only person really alive ever that has the authority to condemn is the only person that says, neither do I condemn you. But this is the point. This is the point I want to get to. Jesus defends the woman. He didn't defend the sin, but he defends the woman. While the accusers all around are pointing fingers, they've got rocks in their hands, and they want to take her out. Jesus comes to her defense. So while Jesus is defending the truth, he's defending the sinner. And all too often, I feel that sometimes in myself and around me, it's so easy to condemn those around us. It's so easy to look at the sin of other people. And then we, we in our conscious, in our thoughts and in our inner beings, we look down at them. Uh, we, we have this amazing truth and those who don't follow the truth either because they don't understand or they don't want to understand we kind of look down the nose at them and, and kind of like condemn them in our thoughts, in our minds ah oh, the sinner but Jesus didn't do that Jesus defended the truth and he defended the sinner and his defense of the sinner is what drew them in he was often ridiculed, or Jesus was often criticized for, for being in the home of sinners. Um, and for, for dining with sinners. And Jesus defended that. Jesus defended sinners. He never defended their sin. Jesus said, I will draw all men unto myself. Uh, if you will but lift me up. And, 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 this is, and this is the thing. Is that I believe while we are defending the truth as we should we are to defend the sinner don't point down a long arm to the sinner but draw the sinner in go and sin no more is the message but embrace the sinner and I believe there are many people out there who don't yet know the truth and while we are going and preaching the truth with everything we've got and we are out there to uh, preach and teach the, the gospel of Jesus and the soon return of Jesus, we cannot do that job without defending the sinner. I'll tell you this much. There are enough accusers in the world. In fact, we read in Revelation chapter 12 um, that there is an accuser. 
<clears throat> Let's quickly go there, Revelation chapter 12. Uh, I don't want to get this wrong, so I'd rather just read it. Uh, Revelation chapter 12. Um, oh no, I can't remember the verse now. Um, give me two seconds. I can't remember the verse. It was yes somewhere. Give me two seconds, I'll find it. There it is right there, verse 10. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before God day and night has been cast down. You see, friends, we have an accuser. The accuser is called the devil, that serpent of old, who roams around like a roaring lion seeking whom he, whom he may devour. He is the accuser. We don't need to join the ranks of accusing. We need to join the ranks of Jesus, who is the light of the world, who is a defender of the truth, who's a, a defender of the sinner, who's a defender of the people. We need to embrace people with the truth. And uh, friends, I want to share that with you today. We have a, we have a God in heaven who is our defender. And uh, he's coming back to fetch those who are like-minded, those who have chosen him. And friends, I can't help but in my mind go back to Matthew chapter, I think it's chapter 7. Uh, Luke, I think also chapter 6 or 7. Chapter 6 uh, has this little section there and it's entitled above the section, Do Not Judge. And it says, do not judge uh, or condemn, for by the measure you judge, you will be judged. Um, by the measure, therefore, that we condemn, we will be condemned. But rather, we are to give. We are to be forgiving. We are to love. We are to embrace um, and share the truth in that context. It will be far more, far easier received. Friends, we have a defender in heaven. His name is Jesus. We have an accuser of the brethren. That old serpent of old, the devil. And why don't we join the ranks of Jesus' saints and be defenders of the truth and be defenders of the brethren. Embrace those who don't yet know the truth. And... Um, and even those who have and turned away, uh, rather than this woman who was thrown in the dust in front of Jesus, let's, let's lift them up. Let's lift up Jesus. And Jesus will draw all men unto himself. And that's our mission, to be defenders, to be defenders of the truth, to be defenders of the brethren. Don't do the one without the other in any order they come as a package defenders let's be defenders and uh, that's what I wanted to share with you today um, I hope there's something in there that resonates with you um, and as it has with me uh, let's close with a word of prayer father in heaven thank you for uh, this time together uh, father I want to thank you that you are our defender and Father, I ask for forgiveness for the times when I have, um, even in my thoughts and my minds, uh, condemned others or judged others for their life of sin or their uh, whatever they're going through. Father, thinking that I'm any better, Lord, this is crazy. We are all sinners. And our most righteous deeds are like filthy rags unto you. Father, forgive us. Forgive them. For they know not what they do. Let's, let's come together. Help us to be a defender of the brethren. Help us to be a defender of the truth. That when we come together, we may lift you up. And you will draw all men unto us to, to yourself. Father, we just, we just one small part in the grand, grand plan. But help us to play our part with all of our hearts. Creating us a desire that will keep us up at night until it is fulfilled in you. That we will share in the mission that we will fulfill the task that you have set aside for each of us to be witnesses for you to share the truth to defend the truth and to defend the brethren 
Help us, Lord, because we can't do it on our own. Give us the strength. Give us the wisdom and the guidance. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi, everyone. So this is a song that uh, we wanted to share with you called Reckless Love by an artist called Corey Ashbury. It's a beautiful song. Um, there's a beautiful um, meaning behind this. And it's, it's a song really about Jesus leaving the 99 sheep and coming after me, finding me, um, bringing me back. And so we hope that if you know it, sing along. If, if you don't, we just hope that you really enjoy it. Um, it's a beautiful song about Jesus never giving up on me, on you, on all of us, uh, where he will break down whatever he can. He'll tear down whatever he can to get to your heart. And it's a beautiful song. So let's, let's, uh, let's sing it together. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Down, lie or tear. 